Hello everybody, welcome to episode 3 of the Elden Ring series. I believe, yes, because I can't enter here, it means that I finished the Average Ale in the previous episode. I don't have a buckler, so I probably struggled. Oh, dogs. Just get away from them, not try to piss them off or anything. I don't know why, I feel like getting the accessory here, just in case I decide to use ranged weapons. <laughs> the power of a shield is just incomparable to everything else. Being able to just block everything and not take damage, it's amazing. And then you add in, of course, jump attacks, which can stagger everything. Truly makes you untouchable. It's normally a second wolf over there, but I guess I'm just not going to have to deal with that one. It ran away like a coward. Let's enter this little thing here. Pick a fight with these guys. Oh, I got hit in the back of the head. <laughs> I should be dead. I think most people would be if they took a sword to the back of the head. Here we go. Arrows reached. Oh, right. This is the one that increases range of bows, not damage. It's too bad. Let's see. Oh, I. Now, I guess I'll keep the flask on the bottom menu there. If you look here on the right side of the screen where it's kind of glowing gold, you can set up a few items here. Like I have these lone wolf ashes for when we go into bosses. That'll summon some wolves. And this whistle that summons my dog. Then right here I can assign other items like throwing knives and bombs, etc. And you can do the same thing down here with the flask of crimson tears, is, which is at the bottom left of my screen, also flickering gold. And you can switch those around. I can put the flask up here on the right, which is what I usually do, but I don't think we'll be using too many usable items in this particular playthrough. We'll see. Switch it around later if I have to. But actually, I don't need to run around on the horse. I think the first thing, first order of business, is actually to quickly go to the table of Lost Grace, our little home hub where the trader is. We're probably going to go a while before we start upgrading anything. One thing we will be doing is buying a rapier. I was going to hold off on it, but I think it'd just be useful for future endeavors. So come here, purchase one rapier for 1,000 souls. It's just a very worthwhile investment. And now, wait, what do I, <laughs> well thought, I have two swords equipped. Now we'll replace our long sword with a rapier. Granted, we are losing about 21 damage, but once I leave this area, I can show you why it's worth doing that. So let's go take care of some more odds and ends in this particular area. We'll be heading to the Storm Hill Shack and then heading sort of northeast-ish. We have a bunch of different things to pick up. A bit of a task-oriented episode today. So, the reason we want a rapier is so that I can hold up the shield and block all damage, but with the rapier I can attack from behind the shield while continuing to block. This is probably the most broken build that exists in Elden Ring. Granted, it takes a lot of stat investment to really make it broken, but it's just very good. While we're passing through, might as well kill some deer. Get the bones and make some arrows in case I need them later. Here, deer, 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 or goat. Deer goats? Whatever they are. Just give them a little stabby stab. Put some holes in them. Don't run from me. It's not worth it. It's never worth it. There we go. Dead deer. Take out the rest of these ones and then we'll be killing that giant up there. To get what he's guarding. Deer. Stop running. It's not worth it. Actually, since this rapier is lighter, I should... Yes, I can wield. Wait, hold on. Actually, brass shield. If I'm just using the rapier, I can use the brass shield, but I can't equip the bow. That's fine. Works for me. We are going to try and take this guy on. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. I might still get stomped on a few times, because I'm just, I do that. I get impatient when fighting them. Go ahead and stab him in his big old foot, right in the cankles. Ooh, almost just got stomped on there. Now these guys have big, obvious choreographed attacks, like that. Very slow. But the camera gets a little janky when locked onto them. See the downside. And here comes a big old jump, having a hissy fit. Luckily, you can avoid most of their attacks just by walking. <laughs> most of the big enemies in the game have a problem with that. Are you moving in general? Whoopsie, can't touch you. Already we're using the shield up rapier method and it is hyper effective because sometimes these guys will throw hissy fits and just start stomping. And when they do that, if you have your shield up, you'll just block it. It eats a boatload of stamina, but you're usually still fine. I'm not gonna jump over that. Some attacks that have AoEs like that sword slam that he just did. 
Oh, oh dear. I actually got hit. There's the first one. But some attacks that have AoEs like that, you can jump over them. Which is a lot easier than dodging them with the barrel roll. Man, these things are so healthy. Oh, here comes a weird attack. He's gonna, like, run around and drag the sword. Typically, if you just run at him, you will avoid most of the attacks. Oh, here comes the hissy fit. Yeah, three stomps, okay. This, this is going to do an AoE, and I can just jump like that, and it'll avoid everything. There we go, dead giant. Sadly, they don't drop anything, ever. But what he was guarding was something up here, which we won't really be able to use immediately. But it's still very nice. Eventually, we'll be able to put that Strength Not Crystal tier, it's a very long name, inside of something called a Flask of Wondrous Physic. It's there's a lot of crazy naming conventions in this game, but you can combine it with a different crystal tier. So that one will give us a strength boost, and then we can get a different crystal tier that will give us a dexterity boost, etc, etc. Ouch, ouch. I don't know why these wolves came down. Ah, okay, this is interesting. If you see enemies with golden glowing eyes, they will give you about five times the amount of runes for killing them, but they will also do more damage. A mechanic you don't see very often, and I really don't understand what causes it. This one, where he's got them glowy eyes. I, I don't know why he has them, but he does. Wasn't that much stronger either, but he gave 275 runes, unlike the others, which gave like 30 or something. Let's see. Drink some of this flask, and then we'll come over here in front of this arena. Now, I just got booted off of my dog because I'm being invaded by an NPC. It's like a fake invasion. This is normally how PvP works in this game. Oh, yeah, I forgot he's got a big ol' hammer. <laughs> the shield and rapier thing is also insanely good for PvP, as long as you have a good shield. Then again, big, angry weapons like what he has are pretty good for PvP too, because it's hard to get staggered when you're attacking with them. Works especially well against things like this, the rapier, because, well, I do no poise damage. I basically don't stagger enemies. Just gotta wait for him to attack and then hit him in the recovery frames. It's the only real method. But it's still very simple, because this is just an NPC, not a real player, so it's not gonna do anything complicated. Now I can basically just flail at him. Yep, there we go. He's dead. I don't think we'll be doing any Elden Ring PvP on this channel. Small red effigy, duelist furled finger. Not gonna be using any of that. I actually don't know why I came over here. <laughs> I'm just trying to follow the usual route that I take when I play the game. Don't want to miss anything. Let's run through this little fire field here. Pick up these butterflies all over the place. Smoldering butterflies. Later on we can turn them into fire pots to throw at enemies. One of the things I want is right up here. We have this man on a horse. And let's see, if I replace my gloves. No, maybe our booties. No, chest piece. No, what about the helmet? Nothing. Oh, I already pissed off the knight. I was gonna see if I could grab a bow. I guess not. We'll just handle him old school style. Sword and board. Ouch, hit me from behind. Weird angles. This is basically just going to be a repeated trade of blows here. Just gotta watch your stamina when doing something like this because we don't have the good shield yet. Well, the best shield. We have a great shield, but it's not going to keep us from dying. Later on, we'll get a shield that blocks almost all stamina damage, so you can just eternally stab from behind, which is amazing. Here we go. If you knock an enemy off a horse, you get a free repast like this. And this guy drops a Ash of War called Golden Vow, which is pretty nice. You can put this on your weapon, proc it, and it gives you a one minute long, roughly, stamina boost. Or not stamina, stat boost. Stamina boost. Oh, oh dear. Try to kill this uh, scarab. Get a free smithing stone. Use that to buff our equipment later. There's a lot of small things in this game that just add up. Collecting smithing stones here and there until eventually you can max out your weapons. Killing deer so you can actually have arrows. Picking up poop so you can refine your weaponry. It's more dogs. We're just going to run past them. We are heading to a little shack over here. That is our goal. 
Let's go ahead and touch this grace. And then we'll rest at it to get our life back. Now inside this shack is War Master something rather. I don't remember his actual name. Bernard, I think it is. And he's gonna say a bunch of things that we don't care about. But he sells Ashes of War. The most important one probably being the parry, which I'll buy right now. And then the second most important being no skill. So this means that if you have a weapon with an Ash of War on it, and you don't want it to have an Ash of War, you can remove it. Very nice. This is probably going to absorb a lot of the souls that we have, but it's worth it. We'll take Quick Step, and maybe a door? Or War Cry? We'll take a door. The rest of these are fairly negligible. They're not great. Most weapons already have these abilities. But Endure allows you to very temporarily activate a buff that will make it so that you're practically unstaggerable. So you can just swing wildly. You also take 45% reduced damage. I guess we'll take Stormblade too. Everything else can be left alone. Now, personally, I like killing this guy. <laughs> And it's not just because I'm a psychopath, it's because there's a major benefit to it. His armor is probably equated to about the second best in the game. And you can only really get it by killing him. And the only benefit to not killing him is that he helps you with a boss later on. That is already insanely difficult. And summoning him, if you summon any NPCs outside of a boss door, and then you walk into the boss door, you will usually end up buffing the boss's health. They'll get nearly two times the amount of health, so it's not really a benefit. And we're not running mage, so it's not like having him distracting them would help, so I think we're gonna top off Bernard here. All right, Bernie boy, I'm gonna take your armor. It's gonna be mine. So you'll take two attacks. Now we use our ability. Nice. Oh, this impaling strike has some range on it. Ooh, ouchies. Don't wanna get too close, he still hits pretty hard. Just keep backing up and stabbing him with this impaling thrust ability, because it's got a lot of range. And we've almost got him down. Oh right, he can chug. I forgot about that. <laughs> you know, I'm curious. Now that I'm out of FP, how much damage will this impaling thrust do? If I just... Oh, 30. Right, not worth it. Ah, now Bernard's all out of orange juice. Poor, poor Bernard. Bernal. <laughs> Whatever, I've been calling him Bernard since I started. Oh, he even has like a little cleric thing. I didn't know about that. That's interesting. Well, sword and board will save us for the rest of this fight. We can just block one or two attacks and then roll away. No thought process needed. This is truly the everyman's build. You could probably pass the controller to your grandma, explain how the shield works, and then she'd be able to win the game for you. I did say I was going to use the most broken build when we started this little series. Come on, Bernie. Oh no, he's not even healing. He's using a buff spell. I guess I've never, never really let him live long enough to see it. Now we got 2,000 souls, and this is what we want. The bell bearing, so we can give that to the merchant at the Table of Lost Grace, our little home hub. And she'll have his store. So the ashes of war bars. Then we get all of this. The Beast Champion Helmet, Armor, Gauntlets, and Greaves. And the Devourer's Scepter, which is technically a legendary weapon, but we'll never use it. It's too unruly. Uh, you know what? Since I have the two talisman slots, I think I'll use this. Enhances stamina reducing attacks against blockers. I don't think we'll ever use it, but it doesn't hurt. Actually, no, no. We'll remove it because it's heavy and see how much of the Beastmaster set we can wear. Can we even put the gloves on? No, we can't. But if you look at the damage negation, you can see that it's better than just about everything that I have on. All of these different pieces are superior to my entire armor set, which is great. Now there's more to this little shack here, so we're going to be resting, and I'm going to apply the parry skill to my shield by hitting the Ashes of War menu and selecting the brass shield and applying the parry to it because I'm going to use it against something we're about to fight. I'm going to pass time until nightfall here. Now if we enter the shack during night time, it should conjure up a little... It should... should... Um, should... Yes, it'll conjure nothing. Give me a second. Let me touch this site of grace real quick. Maybe it needs a reset. Now it should conjure up... A, yep, there we go. Here's a boss. Now I'm gonna try to parry him to death. Oops. I'm used to doing it with a buckler, so it might take me a few tries. There we go. Oh, right, you can't parry that one. Forgot about that. Let me chug real quick. Ooh, ouch, okay. I dropped my shield for no good reason. 
that's slow. <laughs> this may take a couple tries. Now I could just roll around and kill him, but I think it'll be faster to just parry. If you can get good at parrying in this, you can speed up a lot of boss fights, allow you to plow through them insanely quickly, even if you're not actually strong enough to be handling the boss. Just gotta remember to grab our souls, lest we shrivel up and die. And oh right, of course. In vanilla Elden Ring, when you die, it passes to the next time stage. So every time we lose against this guy, we have to go back to the site of grace and pass it to nightfall. But it seems like we have to rest at the grace again to then reset the area. It's very weird that it functions like that. But let's go ahead and take this guy out. Oh, too slow. When his sword is glowing red like that, I'm pretty sure you can't parry any of the attacks. So we'll just have to keep an eye out for that. When he's charging it up like this, however, you can just strafe around him most of the time. That grab, you have to dodge. You cannot block it. Here we go. Two parries in a row. Bars. Ooh, missed the timing on that one. Oop, don't want to try to parry that one either. It's not worth it. Chug some orange juice. Now, the last time I fought him, I think it was in the Ascended mod, and he was way stronger. In most mods, this guy is just much stronger. So this is actually surprisingly easy. Really, it's just about baiting out these bigger, slower attacks, like that shield bash that he's doing. <laughs> Which, if you stand behind him, you can make him start looping like this. I think that's like four or five times in a row. Let's see if we'll do it again. No, he's done. All right, fine. I see how it is. Oh, here it comes again. But you can bait those out and get one or two free hits based on the weapon you're using. So with the rapier, we're sneaking in two. <laughs> just keep going, buddy. Oh, and he's... I'm just going to stab him in the booty hole right there. And now the fight is over. Hooray. Enemy felled. I think the proper term is fell over, but hell, by fallen and I can't get up. Now we got the Bone Peddler's Bellberry. If we head back to the Table of Lost Grace, we can turn that in, and I guess we'll turn in Bernie Boy's little bell bearing as well to the traitor. The one that we just got from that bell bearing boss will allow us to buy bones, little animal bones. So we hit Offer Bell Bearing, the Bone Peddler's Bell Bearing. If we hit Purchase and look at her store now, we have access to Thin Beast Bones and Hefty Beast Bones, which are used for normal arrows and great arrows. And while they are a little expensive at 150 souls apiece, they are technically 10 arrows per bone, I think. No, per two bones, so it's 300 souls for 10 arrows. Either way, it's good to have, because later on we'll be able to craft our own little poison arrows and such. It'll, it'll be good to have. It's a good convenience. And I guess we'll offer her up Bernie Boy's stuff too. Look at his shop. Yeah, it's just Ashes of War. I guess I didn't really have to buy all the things that I did from him, but here we are. Action meet consequence. We have some more odds and ends to take care of. I think it's time for us to go and get the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Something that will be useful for the entirety of the rest of the playthrough, assuming I remember to use it. I hope I do. Shouldn't have any problem between us and our objective. Go ahead and leave these guys on the road. Ignore everything else, run around it, and actually we'll have to kill a handful of enemies up here. We have a scarab here with an ash of war. Might as well take it while we're here. Ouch, 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 ouch. Uh-oh. <laughs> I got distracted. Wait, is that? Oh, no. We have one of these guys. I'm not talking about the enemies that are right in front of us. I mean that guy in the dark armor up there. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, we've started something. Let's lock onto him. Okay, you know what? Let's try to kill these guys real quick. Then just start rolling in fear. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna chug one of my OJs. Okay, I guess we're handling this now. I wasn't planning on it, but I forgot that they just arrive during nighttime. This is a Knight's Cavalry. They only appear during nighttime, and, well, they're annoying because they just run around a lot. Now, they're not too difficult to deal with because you can just block everything, and even if they break your guard, you're usually fine because they attack slow. But he's just going to strafe around a lot and only come in for like one or two attacks like that, and we're only going to get a couple tickles in. That's the annoying part. And if you try to chase him down, he will just lure you all over the map, and <laughs> you'll be fighting more enemies in the map than you will him. So basically, 
He is not the reason he's difficult. The map is the reason he's difficult. And his terrible AI. I don't normally complain about Elden Ring bosses, but this one in particular I think is designed poorly. Oh, I didn't see him winding that up. Whoopsie. I guess we'll chug some more OJ. Do we dodge an attack? OJ. That should be good. Now, the build that we're running here with the sword and the, well, the rapier and the board. <laughs> shield and rapier, or shield and spear, if that's what you prefer to do with it. It is far from efficient, because you take chunks of stamina. Like, if I block this right here, you see that big old chunk of stamina? If you compare that to how much I lose for a roll, it costs me almost three times as much to block the attack. So until I get some very good shields, that's just what I'm going to have to deal with. But you get the convenience of, well, not having to care <laughs> about the hard part of the game. You know, the dodging and the thinking. Yeah, yeah, I just, I got impatient. I started running at him and now he's doing this weird hop around thing. Yeah, get back to attacking me. I appreciate that, Chief. Just stop running around. We, we've we dodged, I think, once and he's almost dead. This is why you run a build like this. It's just so simple. This is the I want my nephew to beat Elden Ring kind of <laughs> build. See, I let go a block there, and I'm, I'm still only down to like half health because this is also just already a tank build. Because we're going all vigor and endurance. And then, even though rapiers are dexterity weapons and it's our primary way of damaging the opponent, we're going to prioritize strength after all the health and endurance and tankiness. And there is a reason why, it's because we want bigger better shields. Always prioritize not taking damage over doing damage. That's how you get good. It's essentially all people mean when they say that to people who are like, oh, Dark Souls is hard. People are like, oh, get good. It's basically just this. Focus on not dying. Oh, we killed his horse. Well, let's make him next. Uh-oh. You've been penetrated. Enemy felled the fuck off of his horse. That wasn't at all part of my plan, but let's go ahead and grab this on this bridge. I guess we got that over with. I didn't even pay attention to what Ash of War he gave. We'll check it at the next Site of Grace. Let's grab these butterflies. I want to get as many of these smoldering butterflies and mushrooms as we can, because eventually I'd like to turn our cracked pots into fire pots. Try to kill this little squirrel thing for bones. Mmm, <laughs> bones. But you can make something called a fire pot, which actually I think I could make that right now. Right, fire pot. All it takes is one mushroom and one of those smoldering butterflies. You just pick them up in the world, which is great. Go ahead and make some bone arrows for, well, later. Uh, you know what? Sure, it's time to clear out some giants. This is sort of part of the process here. Can I just target his one leg? Thank you. Now these giants are kind of stuck to this thing here, but you can still just kind of stomp them while they stomp you. Because they can't move. That other giant to the left is pinned to a carriage behind him. You can just sit here and tickle this giant's foot. While he has a bit of a hissy fit. Because all he can do is that stomp attack. <laughs> it takes a little while. Oh, I guess I was at a weird angle and he managed to stomp on me. <laughs> Slow and tedious. Just the way I like it. Oh, this the caravan is over here. Interesting. Usually they just stay in the back. What's up, horsey man? Okay, we're gonna have to kill these guys. You wanna uh, swing at me, bro? You wanna swing at me, bro? Come on. Sword and board. No thoughts, head empty. Oh, jeez. Okay, well, maybe a little thought. Fighting multiple enemies at a time in this game is usually a bad idea. Usually. Why isn't horse man charging me down? What the hell? And I don't have a bow equipped, so I can't really pick him off from a distance, can I? Right, come on, horse man. Let's play. Yep, that's the way. Me and you, over this way. Come on, buddy. Come on. Ooh, what stamina? Never heard of it. I don't I don't have that. I have misplaced all of my stamina. Have you seen it anywhere? Almost dead. There we go. Let's jump over here and stab this guy to death. Oh, never mind. He got up very quickly. Usually it takes them a long time to get up after falling off a horse. There we go. Back to the sword and board. The stabby. It's so simple. Hold the block button, mash attack button. Things die these guys. It'd be nice if they dropped the Noble's Rapier, but that's not banking on that. It's weirdly one of the rarest weapons in the game. This guy, he's holding it, but I just, there's no way I'm gonna get it. It has like a 0.5% drop rate or something. Something ludicrous like that. It might not be that low, but 
Oh, look, he drops something. These guys always drop something. Roa fruit. There we go. Hey, giants, stop running. You can't just get away from me. That's not how it works. Stop off this last one and get back to stabbing this giant in the leg. We almost got the first one down. Good. Roll out of the way, get our stamina back. This is where magic would shine, certainly. <laughs> Being able to pew pew these giants from a distance and much quicker. Uh, so you kill the first giant and the second one will take a knee. Which means you can just, well, get back to stabbing. It's really no different than the previous one. Yeah, magic definitely shines here. I guess just having an unupgraded rapier is a bit, uh, a bit low in the damage pool. But it's the price we pay for having an insanely safe build. Once we upgrade it, we'll be able to kill things in just two or three stabs. Maybe not the giants, but most things. Look at that, already halfway down. Amazing. All with basically no effort. I have ran through all of my Estus, but that was between the Knight's Cavalry and those other dorks that came at me in a group. Horseman and... The Torch Boys. This is going to be so much better once we get the Antspur Rapier. There is a Rapier that does something called Rotting, which is sort of like a sort of super poison. And being able to poison things from behind your shield means that it doesn't even matter how much damage the Rapier does, the poison will just destroy them after procking. Then we have one more guy over here. Let's go ahead and stab him in the booty hole. Oh, we have two more. Okay. Hey you, give me your rapier. What do you think? No? Roa fruit. Herb. <laughs> what about you? Rapier? Roa fruit. Roa fruit. They drop a lot of things, just never the thing that you want. No noble's rapier for me. However, the carriage that those giants were pulling gave me a great ass. Because of all that exercise. It's one more boss here that we want to take out exclusively for the purpose of having a quick travel point. But this one's pretty simple. It's not really a boss. It's more like, um... I don't know, it's just a normal enemy later on. You know, we'll stick the wolf ashes on it and just see what happens. I want to see how well they do, so I'm just going to stand back here and watch Mad Pumpkinhead versus Wolf. And I mean, so far the wolves are doing pretty good. They're going to die first for sure, but they're still doing good. Uh, get them, wolfies. Get them good little wolfies. You know what, maybe I'll just have a sit. Yeah, I'll just have a little sit. Let's see how it goes. Just sit right down here. Yeah. <clears throat> Yep, they sure are. Oh no, he's gonna hit me. Nope, Will. <laughs> I think I'm fine. Oh, oh, nope, no, not. Oh wait, I don't have any Estus. I guess I shouldn't mess around. Fine, I'll help the dogs. I have more than enough stamina to deal with this. Just gotta watch out for that head slam that he's doing right there. That takes a lot of my stamina up. Just leaving the one wolf alive to do some damage to him from behind. This mad pumpkin head thing has a lot of armor, well, specifically on its head, for obvious reasons. But it's very easy to just accidentally hit his helmet and do 9 damage instead of, well, 90, which is annoying. Let's go ahead and touch grass. Mm. Grass. It's grass flavor. I guess we'll open this door. There's no reason to. There's an NPC in here. Selen. She selens some sorceries. Blah, 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 blah. Exposition, exposition. Study sorcery. Not interested. But if you are a sorcerer, you should come here and probably buy some of these. Minimally, scholar's armament. That's it. The rest of these are fairly irrelevant. You'll already have glintstone arc and pebble. The barrage is bad. Don't waste your time. Glintstone stars is also bad. But if you're lazy and you want to kill bosses without having to aim at them, sure, do that. Let's go ahead and sit at this grass. And now we're going to make our way to that flask of wondrous physic after we hop on our dog and get out of here. We're going to ride back down, kind of close to where this bridge is, that bridge over there where we fought the Knight's Cavalry, unintentionally. Then we're going to take a right away from the bridge and down this little road here. I'm actually going to go a little off the road just so I don't have to deal with any enemies in the area. Many of uh, the tre trees. Oopsie, got stuck in trees. Many of the enemies in the open areas, the non-dungeon areas, really just aren't worth messing with. I'm thinking I should put some of these points into endurance so I can wield my bow properly. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I'd probably do that. The only other option would be finding a crossbow somewhere. Nice light one. But those kind of suck. Yeah, I'll pass on the crossbow. Let's kill us some goat dogs. I really, 
is it it's it's goat right it looks kind of like a goat but also a deer it's a deer goat it's a doat let's go ahead and touch this grass you just follow this road down here you'll run into it naturally we're going to continue following this weird little like southeastish road let's see three points into endurance should be good for now that will allow me to oh yeah that'll give me an extra like five pounds of carry weight shouldn't need to touch endurance again for a while we'll do that while we're at it what did oh repeating thrust i think that's what we got from the uh knight cavalry that we killed which is pretty neat. oh no yeah the scarab gave us determination then repeating thrust is from the nice cavalry cool beans let's get back on our horsey doodle dandy and ride up here we are about to kill a man for no good reason well actually a pretty good reason but we're gonna kill a man that man the one that's talking to us i didn't say that you could speak to me chief oh man you have so much to say don't you i'm sure it's just a bunch of wonderful things but really i i don't care let's go ahead and try to keep him from falling off that could get annoying having to go down there and handle the enemies oh that missed wonderful let's try at a different angle then there we go all right kenneth come and play buddy come on it's a cute little dagger you got there you have something that i want it's a very simple mechanism of life and like a damn bandit i'm gonna take it from you what are you running away for kenneth are you all out of orange juice there we go. Oh, Patrick. Why have you forsaken me? No, stop being a drama queen. All right, so what he had was a golden seed. That means that I might be able to upgrade how many flasks of crimson tears I have. More orange juice. Let's go ahead and continue heading south for now so that we can go and get our flask of crimson tears. Also, boar. Piggy wiggy. Well, it survived my first attack with like one HP in a dream deer no that's a boar might as well kill them there's no reason not to if i could just if i could just figure out where it is it's in the bushes sneaky boar this is what we want a church and we're not here for the faith we're here for the flask crimson crystal tear and a flask of wondrous physic and over here near this statue is a sacred tear that will increase how much our orange juice in the lower left the flask of crimson tears will increase how much that heals us when we use one and if you are a mage, that will increase how much FP you recover. It's good stuff. Yeah, so if we go into here, we can increase how much the flask recovers. We now have a flask of crimson tears plus one. We will need one more golden seed to increase how many flasks we have, though. But that puts us a step closer. We have a new menu here, Mix Wondrous Physic, which you can interact with to, well, mix your wondrous physics. All of the items you pick up, called crystal tears, can be placed in here. You can have two at a time inside this flask. It will give you two different benefits based on what you put in. So, it comes with this one, which restores half of your HP, and the one we picked up near that giant at the beginning of the episode gives us a temporary boost in strength. Gives us plus 10, I believe, strength for about 2 minutes, which is a pretty long time. That's basically a whole boss fight. Now, we have a few other things to do, but I think we'll be taking a bit of a alternate route to a later point in the map because if you run behind the church you can see it right there you just run behind that statue essentially you'll run into this portal here you interact with it travel to another location and bada bing bada boom you're right behind a boss and you don't want to touch it if you open your map here <laughs> you'll see that you're way in the upper right of the map which is neat it's also a portion that you couldn't really see before it's the easiest way to point out that the game is even bigger than what you're seeing here. There's also underground portions. It's massive. Imagine Skyrim, but hard. We're gonna go ahead and crack this door open and ignore the strange beast man back there. Just so we can touch this grass. Hmm, grass. And that's so that we can quick travel back anytime that we want. Now our goal is to ride our mighty steed past this weird gargoyle thing. Yep, ignore it. Pretend it's not there. I like to go around the right side of it because sometimes if you go around the left, he just doesn't like it. I don't know why. He has a, a propensity for attacking to his left side, I guess. And what we got there was a golden seed, which means we can now upgrade how many flasks we have. We're up to seven at this point, which is pretty cool. And if we keep following down here, down this hill, we have a sight of grace. And this is likely going to be the end of this episode, but before we end it. I will show something that, well, you could find in plenty of other videos, but I suppose I should highlight it. If you are actually, for whatever reason, following through this with your own playthrough, if you find that you're having difficulties 
dealing with anything, the site of grace that we just got is right here. And there's a little road across from it is these guys, these little enemies here. And they hit like a truck, for sure. But in turn, they're super plushy. And if we look at the souls after I kill one... I just gotta get to the point where I can actually kill one, though. They are, after all, further in the game, technically, than we're supposed to be right now. You can usually just aggressively R1 at them. Now if we look at my souls, I just got 1,094 from killing one of them. And there's four down this little path here. And they're all kind of spread out in such a way that you shouldn't get attacked by more than one. Most of the time, unless you've been moving around a little too much or unawares. So if you want to level, this is a good place to do it. If you kill one of these, it's about the equivalent of killing one of the giants in the previous area. So, this is your grinding spot. And this is also the end of episode 3 of the Elden Ring series. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye.